Hi folks, thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and at the end of last year we moved to a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. This week autumn takes hold in the Glen, so I go foraging to look for immune boosting ingredients ahead of the cold winter months to come. Plus we take you along as we visit a local pottery for a live demonstration and stop in at a local cafe with possibly the best decor on Skye. And I have a close encounter with one of the island's most majestic wild birds, the sea eagle. Join, Join us, us as we continue. continue. Live in the sky life. Me and Jack are just out for an evening stroll. I think there's a heat wave going on in the UK and it's actually reached sky, which is amazing. We're also out on a little foraging expedition as well. Today we're looking for elderberries and we know there's elder trees in the Glen because we saw the flowers earlier in the year. We normally make elderflower cordial and we just missed it because we had so much stuff going on with the buyer. But I've never made elderberry cordial and I really want to because I came home from my trip down south a few weeks ago and I had a really scratchy throat and I got a bit of a cold and I just felt really run down and elderberry are really good for the immune system so it's my idea to make an elderberry cordial that's gonna be really good for boosting our immune system over the cold months to come I have my foraging dog with me who is as always a hindrance not a help but he's cute so he gets away with it and I have my foraging stick <laughs> this is a walking stick that Willie made for me ages ago and we've never really used but because there's a few branches that are out of my reach I thought this would be a good thing to have so <laughs> I've got my foraging stick with me as well I do feel quite hobbit-like with it, which is no bad thing. So I found my tree and I'm going to have a look for some elderberries and uh, usually I would just put forage stuff in a cloth bag or a basket but elderberries are notoriously bad for staining so I don't really want to get purple over everything so I've brought one of these which is uh, one of those compostable bags so I'm going to put them in there and hopefully that will keep them all secure and not stain my bag purple. Loads more brambles out here too. Might have to take a few of them. I wonder if they'd go nicely in the syrup. These ones aren't even ripe yet. They're all still green, pretty much. But that doesn't matter anyway, because that's in one of our neighbor's gardens. So uh, I haven't seen them to speak to them. So I can't pick them without their permission. Well, I got a decent little haul off that tree and also lots of brambles. So I'm not doing too badly. Now I'm going to take Jack to the woods and we'll keep an eye out. I don't think I've seen any elder trees in the woods opposite, but you never know. We'll have a good look. You can see the leaves just starting to turn there. A lot of patches of orange. Autumn is definitely on its way, even if the temperature doesn't agree. <laughs> As you climb higher in the forest, there's less um, deciduous trees and more evergreen trees. More of the native woodland is lower down in the woods. So I don't think we're going to find any elder here. But Jack will get a good walk and I've got a couple of other spots to check out as well. So I think we'll be fine. Wow. Beautiful evening. It is so muggy. It feels like there needs to be like a big thunderstorm to break it. It's that warm. All right, come on, monkey. Still got some foraging to do.
Okay, so we're about to head home, but I'm just gonna wander up this track because I'm pretty sure there's some rose hips growing wild in the hedgerow there. And I would like to put some rose hips in the syrup as well. They're really high in vitamin C, so that's gotta be really good for your immune system. So let's go take a walk up there, find some rose hips, and then that should be us done. Not sure if these ones are quite ripe enough, but I think I have seen better ones along the way. These ones look good, a bit high up. We've just pulled into Skio Pottery, which is a local pottery. We've just been in and we've met the people that run it and they're ace and they're gonna let us film a live demonstration. So we'll go in now and we'll introduce you to Katie and look. And you get to see the pottery with the best view possibly in the it world. It is the best view in the world. And we've got a pretty good view, but wait till you see this. What have you found? So this I think is like an honesty box that you get all over the Highlands, usually for eggs and cakes and things that people have made. Buy their work, even if they're not in the pottery shop. Look at that, so beautiful. Really, really lovely designs. I've never seen anything like this actually. Very cool. I'm very interested in pottery. I have actually bandied around the idea of doing it when I'm a bit older and a little bit less hyperactive because I'm quite hyper, but um, I think it would take me a, a few years to actually learn it and then <laughs> actually sit down long enough to do it. Wow, look at this work. This is incredible. Absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Look at the finish on that. Whoa, I love the colour. That's your favourite colour. Shockingly, I like the teal ones. Yeah, I like these ones as well with the patterns. I think there might be some uh, Christmas presents being bought here. Look at these cups as well. I love these just behind you there. Really nice. Work less and avoid most people. <laughs> That's my ethos right there. <laughs> Avoid the most people apart from everyone in the world on YouTube. Right, shall we go and meet the potters, Katie and Luke? Let's go through. Oh, I love that sign. That's a cool sign. Luke and Katie. Hello. 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 Welcome. How are you doing? We'll just act like we've never met you before. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> I see some work going on here. Yeah, Whoa. just slipping some cups. I mean, trying to put some colour into my sort of brutalist concrete espresso cups. Adding a bit of pink. Adding a bit of pink on the inside, that's beautiful. So, we'll see how it goes. It might be an absolute failure. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that looks like you know, you know what you're doing very well. That looks really cool, man. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, they've been really popular, these espresso cups. It's really nice. It's how I started my whole pottery journey by making myself an espresso cup. So, right. Yeah. Big coffee fan as well, then. Yes. Yeah, you we are. Too. Now I can make cups for the coffee that I like. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So, there's some really nice coffee shops in the sky as well. So. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we, we frequent them all pretty much. Yes. And Katie, what are you doing? I'm making some earrings from the off cuts um, of the clay. So, this right. is like, um, a marble clay. This would all go in the bucket otherwise. So. I can cut out some little circles and make some earrings. So that is so good. Try That's not to have any waste. No waste. Very clever. I like that a lot. <laughs> good it. ethos. All the other little bits end up in a bucket that we can mash it back into reusable clay. So again, nothing goes to waste and everything ends up being Love that. again. <laughs> love it. It's so clever. I love that. Yeah, we have zero waste on the clay now. Excellent. Amazing. So you use it in the slip as well, I assume, with the bits yeah, that you can. Yeah, everything yeah. gets used, so... Okay, it makes yeah. these fish as well. Any fish around that's all reclaimed clay, and she gets the sort of bits of fishing string from the beach. So she yes. gets litter off. Oh, yeah. So we get Amazing. the litter off the beaches, and then we reuse all the clay, so it's kind of like a nice... Mm -hmm more sustainable product I guess. Yeah, and these are all actually made from reclaimed clay. Okay. So there's all different colours and tones, so everything comes out quite unique. You never know what you're gonna get really. It's good.
painted using a wax resist technique. So paint on with the liquid wax, the design, and then it dips in the glaze and where the wax is, all the glaze just runs off. Um, so you get sort of a raw design around the glaze. It's a bit unpredictable, but the, that's quite nice about it. I love that colour as well. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's my favourite glaze at the moment, the coral beach. Oh, like the turquoise water? Yeah, and then it picks yeah. up these little black dots just like the sand at coral beach. Yeah, it's nice. Jack, who's this good dog? Yes, he's a good boy. So I use a grey stoneware clay that kind of represents the concrete and because I'm into brutalist architecture and I always glaze my stuff only on the inside so I have raw textures on the outside, so similar principles to brutalist architecture. And the more I sort of sponge I can create more texture and have different grain coming through the grey clay so it just adds a bit of sort of warmness to them. I made some nice espresso cups for the Dunbagan so if you're ever down there you can have a nice dear green coffee in a espresso cup. I mean that's what we've basically been spending all last summer doing is working for all the businesses. Mm. So we've been doing stuff for Lock Bay down at the bottom, we've been yeah. doing stuff for the Dunfagan, or Cafe Cool. Oh yeah, we know Cafe Cool. Got yeah. a lot of paintings in their in their shop. Yeah, I know. Mean, we must have seen them then not realised. Yeah. Everybody's been really super supportive and the Airbnbs have been sort of taking flyers and taking people down here. Some people yeah. have been buying things for people to use yeah. while we're there. So it's been a really sort of inclusive community. Yeah. It's been Brilliant. Really nice. That's what we found as well on Sky, like because it's moved to such a community that supports each other and all yeah. the businesses kinda wanna help out. That's what we wanna do with the videos yeah. as well, is to like showcase all the all the people making and working here. It's, yeah. It's a really nice vibe. Yes. Yeah. This is Katie's working station. She's going to do a little demonstration. But before we get into that properly, look at this view. Isn't that absolutely stunning? That is crazy. I think that is probably the best working view on Sky. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just finishing off a few of these pots, trimming off the excess clay and just smoothing everything out. <laughs> final step is stamping them with our stamp. Mm -hmm. So what does skewer mean? I feel like it was having a meeting. Old Norse for sky. So there's like oh. quite a few variations of Old Norse for sky. <laughs> uh, this one's from the Old Norse sagas. So these are going to be a spoon rest. So I'm just cutting out a notch. So it's the kind of thing you put next to your cooker, oh, pop yeah. your spoon on there. Yeah. We've got one in the house and it's one of the things that we use the most. So yeah. that and the salt pigs that are always <laughs> kind of just next to the cooker and get used every day. This is the uh, amazing dishwasher storage. <laughs> I think that's really funny. <laughs> Yeah, we're just using a, a storage, so... I love it. Amazing. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> well, guys, thanks so much for showing us around. That was really kind of you to let us film. I hope you guys enjoyed out there as well. Yeah. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, thanks for coming and everyone's welcome if you want to come see what we do here on Waternish. Yeah. And you should because it's so lovely here. The pottery is absolutely amazing and the artistry behind it is incredible too. And also, you get that view over there. <laughs> it's, it's just one of the nicest places to come and see. And uh, the vibe as well with the artwork that's going on in here is just such a warm place so uh, we definitely recommend it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll have to go home and figure out where our mugs are going. Yeah. <laughs> we got one each. <laughs> hey. come into the Bog Myrtle Cafe which has recently been done up, I think it's under new ownership and now they allow dogs which is great because they didn't before and one time a while ago we came here with Jack, we sat down outside on a lovely sunny day and it started pouring rain, I mean really pouring rain and so instant as well so we got absolutely soaked, we ended up sitting underneath an umbrella <laughs> it was like swimming in water, it was really funny, well it's really funny now, it wasn't so funny at the time but anyway Sarah's just away to place an order I think and uh, we're gonna have a bit of lunch and the deck on here is really cool now, it's a bookshop as well, you can actually buy the books I think around here. Yeah, yeah. I noticed there's a guitar there as well but I won't feel tempted. I'm not going to be that guy at the party that picks up the guitar. <laughs> I've been that guy in the past. I hadn't realised at the time but the cafe had recently been completely renovated by the famous and very talented interior designer Banjo Beale for the BBC TV show Designing the Hebrides. 
The centerpiece of this design is the incredible stained glass window which we absolutely love. Maybe we should have put a stained glass window in instead of the centre partition when we renovated the buyer building into studio spaces earlier this year. Oh well, I mean it does the job I suppose. It doesn't look half as good though, let's be honest. You found your mum? He was trying to rearrange the furniture. Yes, I walked away and you walked away. He is not happy about that. He has to move furniture to get to us. <laughs> it was very kind of them to bring you a bowl of water, wasn't it, Jack? And have you drank it? You had one mouthful. Everyone's on the fancy coffees. Not me. You stay classy, Kokodi. But I am brew. <sighs> Delicious. He's actually tied around the leg of my seat. And the reason you have to do that is because Jack will head straight for the source of the food smell. So if I was to take him off right now, he would run straight to the kitchen and jump up and probably eat whatever he could find there. Wouldn't you, Jack? Yes, because you're pesky. So that's why he has to be tied up, unfortunately. He's usually quite good. He settles down after a few minutes. He'll be lying on the carpet soon. We don't want any thievery from our hound. And we certainly don't want him in the kitchen. Jack, you've been a good boy. Yes, I agree. Oh, you came back from the toilet and your food's there. That's it's like, a dream. It's like Pulp Fiction, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exactly like Pulp, pulp Fiction right now. <laughs> yeah. So what soup is this? Um, potato and parsnip. Excellent. And this nutty is a... Nutty crunch. I see the nutty crunch. Nutty and crunchy. Mm -hmm. And this is a venison salami sandwich. And uh, I might get some of it if I'm lucky, but <laughs> this little dog has other ideas. never managed to resist the cake ever. No. What did you get? A plum and frangipan crumble bun. Okay. That's oh. quite a mouthful. And what did you get for me? I thought we could share it because it's absolutely huge. All right, fair one. Seems fair. <laughs> made from skio pottery. I'm going to try it and see if it functions. It does function. Because it's got that rough texture, I quite like that on my lip. But Sarah wanted to go for the smoother style. It fits really well in my hand as well. It's just a nice size. It's not too big, it's not too small. And it feels good. It feels like earth. Cheers. Here's to Luke and Katie at Skio Pottery. We are fans. Mm. Jack is unconcerned. Jack doesn't like coffee. I was literally just getting ready to go out for a walk with Jack and I looked out the window and noticed there was this kind of flash of white and a big bird landing. And it's a white-tailed eagle, a sea eagle. And it's literally just perched on the seashore down in front of me. I'm trying to film it, but it's, it's really far away, so I'm not getting a very good shot. And then I noticed there was another one. I think there's two. I think there's an adult because it had a really bright white tail and a juvenile has a half white, half brown tail. That's amazing. We usually see them flying around, but they're so high up that you can just make out it's them and not much detail. But this is incredible. I can see them like with my own eyes. I'm looking at them through the binoculars again. So I'm not looking at sheep this time. I'm looking at two sea eagles. This is insane. I really hope I can get it on camera for you. I don't know whether just keep watching from here or go and try and see them a bit closer. Sarah just went down there to try and get a photo of the white-tailed eagle, which is now flying away, unfortunately. Took me a while to find her there. She's wearing my fishing jacket, which is waterproof, but also camouflage, which was why it was so hard to see her. But it didn't fool the sea eagle. Here she comes back. I need to get her a jacket like that. That's far too big for her. <laughs> she's not giving up though. She's still looking. No, she's giving up. 
<laughs> she spotted me. Here she comes. Well, it flew off just as I got to a bit where I could potentially get a picture of it. But I don't think I scared it because it was looking like it was going to fly off anyway. That was amazing. I think that's... I think that's the closest I've seen it. I've seen one closer, slightly closer, but but I, not... because I crept up on it under trees. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then as soon as I got ready to take the, the, the footage, it went. Yeah. Well, that was months ago. They're, they're pretty savvy. I can see where it's landed in the trees as well. And part of me wants to go over and try and get a picture. But I think we'll just leave it be because we're taking Jack for a walk now. So we'll do that instead. But that was so cool. I feel like you don't see them for a while and then suddenly you get like an amazing encounter. Oh, no, you do see them. We see them regularly. Yeah. You just, just don't get that close to them. Really high up in the air. Whereas mm. this was like, you could see it just with your naked eye. You didn't need binoculars. So yeah, super cool. It's the next day after my little foraging trip in the woods with Jack and I have my elderberries and rose hips and I've got some brambles that I picked last night and I've actually topped them up with some more brambles from our garden as well. So they are very much sky life brambles and I think I'm going to combine them all into one syrup. I'm going to make the fruit juice first and then you add in the sugar afterwards. So I'll combine them all when I add in the sugar. Hopefully that's going to see us through the winter without catching too many coughs and colds. <laughs> Even if it doesn't, I'm sure it'll taste nice. It's all very autumnal in the kitchen. We've got elderberries, got rose hips, brambles. I've got some more mushrooms drying in the background there. No one seems to have told the weather though that it's autumn because it is roasting. It's another scorching day, which is lovely, but we've got so much work to do today and feels like we can't really make the most of it. I've taken Jack out for a walk already this morning and he went for a lovely swim in the river and I was very jealous. Maybe we'll get out for a swim later on, but yeah, we've got so much to do because we're actually going back to Fife this weekend for Willie's mum's birthday. We're driving down first thing in the morning. It'll be a really nice surprise for her birthday, but it just means that we've got a lot to do today to get the house tidy and get packed, get all this stuff done, <laughs> and also work on editing the video as well for next week, because I think it's gonna be a bit hectic. So let's get going, gonna make the syrup, and then maybe we can get out and enjoy the sunshine for a bit. So the first thing I need to do is take all the ripe elderberries off the stems. So you can see they're pretty tiny and we don't want all the stems. That would make it really bitter if you use the stems. So you just want the berries. And the best way to do that is to use a fork. the most fiddly job I'm gonna to have to do. I've done my best to get all the unripe berries and all the stalks out that I can. I'm never gonna get all of them out because it is so fiddly I would be here for hours but it looks pretty good to me. I've got just under 300 grams of elderberries so I think it's a good thing I've got the rose hips and the brambles to bump it up a bit and I think we'll end up with some nice syrup. The next job is to take off all the little leaves of the rose hips and roughly chop them in a food processor. The thing you have to be careful of with rose hips is that the seeds inside are really itchy, they're an irritant, and they were actually used in itching powder that you would buy at a joke shop. So yeah, inside there, there's lots of seeds and they are an irritant. So obviously we don't wanna eat them and I don't wanna touch them either. So I'm gonna chop those in a food processor. It all goes into the pot to make the syrup. I'm gonna use a linen tea towel, which I've boiled and strain it twice. So you make sure you get all the seeds out because yeah, you don't wanna be eating or drinking that. So I've got the brambles and the elderberries in a pan with just enough water to cover them and some sliced ginger and a cinnamon stick as well. I'm going to simmer those for 20 minutes and then take it off the heat and strain it. And I've also got some water boiling for the rose hips as well. So I'm going to bring that to the boil and they're going to steep for 20 minutes as well. I'm going to strain them and then I'm going to add both the liquids together and add in the sugar to make the syrup. Oh my gosh, the colour and the smell of that syrup is amazing. It smells really like wintry and Christmassy, which I think is gonna be good over the coming months.
Okay, so that is all the fruit strained and I've got rid of the pulp and I'm just gonna give it one final strain because there's a few little bits of seed and stuff that have got through the net in the first round and I definitely don't wanna be drinking rosehip seed. We're trying to avoid a scratchy throat, not the other way around. Then the next step is to add in the sugar. It's about 500 grams of sugar for every pint of liquid that you have. So mine's just gonna be a little bit over. I tried it, it was pretty sweet. Um, it is going to be a syrup, so we're only going to have a tiny little amount as like a cordial or maybe over ice cream. But it was quite sweet, so I wanted to combat that a little bit, so I put in some lemon juice. So simmered it for 10 minutes with the sugar, and now it's ready to bottle. I have to say, it's the most beautifully coloured drink I've ever seen and it looks like Ribena, which in my eyes is no bad thing because I was obsessed with Ribena when I was a kid. This is just a bit of the syrup with some sparkling water. Willie's out on the boat, so I'll wait and see what he thinks when he comes home. All right, Willie's back from tinkering with the boat again. <laughs> so it's time to see what he thinks of the syrup. I hope he likes it. Hi, I'm Willie. It feels so strange to have made something really like autumnal or even wintry because it's quite it smells really nice. It smells very Christmassy. Yeah, and it's literally like mid twenties sunshine. Go on in. Hmm. Well, that's really nice. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it's not as Christmassy as I thought. There's a syrup you can take for your immune system, and you get it in the pharmacy called Sambucol. So yeah, it was kind of to create that syrup, but from stuff we found at home, which I've done. And what are you calling it? I have no idea what I'm calling that. It's got three things in it, elderberries, brambles, and rose hips. And ginger. And a bit of ginger and cinnamon for flavouring. Right. Which are all really high in antioxidants and vitamin C and all that stuff. How so. about, I've got something breaks through here. How about, ready? Drum roll. I'm, I'm ready. Drum roll. See the syrup? <laughs> I think this would go really nicely in a glass of Prosecco. And it's a Friday night. No, the drink that you'd have normally is uh, it's black cunt syrup, isn't it? Well, it's Kier Royale anyway. Chambord. So you were going to call it, instead of Kier Royale, you were going to call it... I was going to go Sky Royale. And then I said, <laughs> Coolin not... Royale. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think was a good name for it? Coolin Royale. Coolin Royale's pretty cool. Cool. And Royale. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a go. Give the Coolin Royale a try. That's nice. That's pretty nice. <laughs> I can't say I've ever felt healthy while drinking Prosecco, but this is about as close as you're gonna get. <laughs> as usual folks, thank you so much for watching our video. We really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, Please do leave us a like, a comment, or subscribe to our channel if you don't already. It's free to do and it really helps us to grow. If you did enjoy the video and you'd like to help us out a little bit further, you can do so over on Ko-fi. You can buy us a coffee, or you can buy Jack a wee treat, or you can just help with the costs of running this channel. If you want to help us out more long term, you can become one of our amazing patrons over on Patreon, where you get lots of extra content for helping us out every month. Also, I'm so excited to announce that after having lots of requests, I have put together a 2024 calendar of my paintings. So if you head to my Etsy store now, you'll be able to pre-order a calendar, as well as buying prints, cards, and mugs that I have on there as well. If you do want to visit my Etsy store, the link to that and all of our other pages are in the video description. Hello. Thanks again for watching our video and we will see you next week. Ooh. <laughs> 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 <The> tripod. <laughs> We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Living the sky life. So my prayer.
prints, my cat. Really hot right now. And there's important stuff to sniff. And whittle on. Everyone's drinking really fancy coffees. My hand's shaking like a leaf. And that's why I'm not having a fancy coffee because I've already had two coffees today. More stuff to sniff. And whittle on. I haven't got any food yet, Jack. It's coming though. Is he all tangled again? He is all tangled again. Right, let's do that again. Click here to subscribe to Live in the Sky Life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.